over 100 years ago, this man, he, he came among our people for seven years. He lived up all up and down Molustuk mm -hmm. River, and he brought this phonograph machine with the wax cylinders, and he collected over 100 of our traditional wax, or, or 100 of our traditional songs on wax. Like changing of the seasons, nothing ever stays the same. Sometimes our world crashes down All we know goes up in flames A broken bone that heals Is much stronger than before Don't look down Keep your head up Hi everybody, I'm your host Don Amaro and today I have a wonderful guest on the show. Jeremy Dutcher is a, an incredible musician, inspiring and unique, and somebody I greatly admire here today on Through the Fire. Jeremy Dutcher. Don Amiro. Nice to see you, my friend. And you. You know, I, uh, I know that you're here uh, for, you were just part of the, the Winnipeg Folk Festival here in Winnipeg. How was your experience at the Winnipeg Folk Festival this it year? It was incredible. It was my first time to play the Winnipeg Folk Festival. And it's like one of these festivals that people whisper about and talk about, oh, you got you to gotta play that. That's a really good one. <laughs> um, but I just had never had the opportunity. and and. And I guess it had been going on for a really long time, too. This is like, what, like almost four, over 40? 40, 40? Over 40, maybe? That 30? blows my mind, yeah. you know? And there's like little like communities that pop up in like a field somewhere and, yeah. and just like for art and for music and for collectivity, I think it's the most beautiful thing, right? So I, I, I love playing. I haven't done it much, actually, like playing the festivals. Um, so this summer is kind of the first time I'm doing that, right. going around and... Feels like that for all of us now. Right. <laughs> We've all been we waiting to get back at totally, it. Totally, totally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the Winnipeg Folk Festival hadn't happened for two years, I guess. Yeah. And so we're all just kind of like, it's heightening the whole thing. I, I don't think we all realized how important, I mean, we knew because we're musicians, mm -hmm. but I don't think like the collective, collective knew yeah. quite how essential the arts is and, and how... We need that kind of shared experience to keep us well. Mm -hmm. Like that's part of wellness. Music is medicine. Yeah, that's it, that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I think we're all being reminded of that every time we go to a festival and come together. And it really felt that way of like, oh, this is a medicine space. Like mm -hmm. this, is, this is healing space. We're coming together. People were dancing, you know, there was people shouting, I love you from the mm -hmm. audience. And I was like, that feels so good, you know? It's not, um, not that I needed the validation, but it's just, yeah. it's nice to hear again, to, like, to have that relationship and then get to meet, you know, young indigenous festival goers that like in their gookum scarves and <laughs> it was incredible. Like, um, the people came out, Yeah, yeah. you know, where, where are you from? I'm from, okay. So I'm from the East, East, yeah, close yeah. to the ocean. Yeah. So a, a lot of, but okay. So we call ourselves Willis de Week, but a lot of people were like, say, say it again. Willis de Week. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll, break, I'll break it down like this always. So we live along the Wulustuk River. Wulustuk. Wulustuk. And um, the language we speak is, since it comes from that river, we say it's Wulustukwe. So that's the language, Wulustukwe. And then since we're people of that river, we call ourselves Wulustukwek. So that's kind of how it breaks down, mm. but it all comes back to that river, right? And so every time I talk about where I'm from, got to go yeah. to the river. And then even the uh, album that I made is all songs about that river. I got it right here. Um, so this this album, uh, you gifted to me today. Thank you. Of um, course. This is this is the big one. This is the one that that kind of launched everything. <laughs> I would say in the last. Well, couple it's years, the for sure. only one. It's the only one. <laughs> it's the only one and the one, because you got the Polaris Music Prize with this yeah. album. You won a Juno with this yeah. album. Uh, pretty epic. And, and not only that, like the art piece here, we, maybe we can put it in post somewhere, but yeah. I, uh, there's so much meaning behind everything you do, I feel. Like, like there's not a, not a moment wasted, not a visual wasted in what you do. That's how I feel, and I think it's all intentional. I would, I would imagine. Incredibly so, and I think you know this record took from research to um, kind of building the compositions to recording it to putting together the the imagery and artwork. It was a it was a five year process, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I'm trying, it, it, it's hard because that's so anti the music, how the music business wants you to make things. They, like, mm. there's, a, there's a very like, okay, what's your single? Where are you? Like, it's always like, right. what's next? And it's like, no, 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 no. Let's be slow about building it. Let's be slow about how we release it and be really intentional. Mm. Especially working with these songs. I felt like a real protective nature right. to them. Because did, did this start with the language? I mean, it all starts with the language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, but uh, in a way, yeah. Your traditional language is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Willis yeah. um, can you can you can you speak a little bit of it? I'd love to just hear it. Like, if you wouldn't mind just course. speaking some of it. I could even just introduce myself in the way that. that yeah, that please feels do. Like. I'd love to hear that. So I would say, Kwe, Snawen, Ntliwe, Spigudwe, Jiplag, Ntuje, Onegutkuk, Wabanaki, Kuk. Do jintak nil naga edge will the hazi uh he would uh no need a badana mural. Edge will uh will you win naga Yeah, I'm just really happy. I'm just kind uh, of expressing that I that I'm I'm really happy to be here sitting with my friend mm. uh Don Muro and uh, my name uh I introduced my name and kind of where I come from. Mm. Um so to go back to where this all started, it, it, it came from what we don't have. I looked around and I saw a lack. I, you, saw, you, I, I think you said there was a hundred people that maybe spoke the language. Exactly, the right? And so there's a real, we're at a critical point right now. It had always been, ever since I was young, it, it had been imposed onto us that like, it's critical. Like, this is the generation. Like, we are, we've been labeled a severely endangered language. You know, we're on the deathbed. So mm -hmm. like, we, we have to do everything we can to revive it and, and keep it keep it there for the ones because we know that like within these languages exists because language ah, language is not words a language is a worldview it's a philosophy it's a way of expressing thought right and so to keep our distinct way of doing that one that is rooted in this land like that actually comes from here you know I think was was always impressed on me as a young person and so there was kind of this wonderment every time I heard my language and it didn't happen much because we were mostly English at home. But like when my grandma would speak to my mother or the aunties would talk, it'd be, I would just, you just try to pick up anything. Mm. And you know, it was that kind of wonderment became, that, that came before I even understood the, the, the wider picture mm. of like why. You know, our language didn't get up and walk away, you know? We have this um, traditional song, and the lyrics are so devil mouse we know kill you. All my people, this is for you. Hmm. And I always tried to orient everything I was doing with that record. Who's it for? Who's it for? Who's it for? Hmm. And at the end of the day, it was like I just wanted to create a world, or like even even for 60 minutes of a record, I wanted to create a world where our our music and our language was elevated to the heights of the classical greats like Beethoven or, mm. you know, like Bach. And there's just like, if we could value ourselves just as much as they value themselves, mm. wow, we would change the world, mm. right? And, and so going into that archival space and getting to see the breadth and like, just beauty of who our ancestors were and what mm -hmm. they, the, the, the seeds that they were planting for us. Yeah. It, it, and that's why I try to think about it as a spotlight because it's like just taking that and, or maybe not even a spotlight but a mirror. Mm. Kind of taking that and just reflecting it back into community mm. and just saying like, this is how beautiful you are. When you, when you talk about the archives, yeah. you were working at the archives. Totally. So looking at our music on the East, and, and what that entailed. I started to go around and interview, um, like do some field work and interview song carriers, you know, all up and mm. down the coast. It was amazing. Um, and just through those conversations, there was one particular conversation that changed my life. I think they were all kind of life-changing in a way, but there was one uh, with a Passamaquoddy elder, Maggie Paul. And Maggie's voice is actually on that album. There's, okay. there's a snip from that interview that we did, like this was almost eight years ago now, mm. but you know, um, just kind of asking her how music had changed in the community throughout her life. You know, when she was born, singing right. our songs was illegal. 
Yeah. Like, let's, let's, let's let that sink in. Mm. So she's seen this transformation where now we're on stages at the Junos and um, Polaris or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. these, big, these big stages that we get to inhabit right now and share our language, or share our philosophies and all that kind of stuff. It's, for her, unbelievable. Mm. Anyway, so, so through that conversation, she really kind of shook me and inspired me. And she says, you know, if you want to know about the old songs, you can't even stick around here. You gotta go to the you gotta go to the archive, and so she told mm. me that like, you know, in over a hundred years ago, this man he he came among our people for seven years. He lived up all up and down Molustuk mm. River, and he brought this phonograph machine with the wax cylinders, and he collected over a hundred of our traditional wax, or a hundred of our traditional songs on wax. That's um, incredible. And then put them in the museum. And you found them. Well, I didn't. Find, here's the thing: I was pointed to them okay. by my elder Maggie, because she had been doing that. She had done that work in the '70s. Uh, she had heard about it somehow. She wanted to know about it, and this was kind of American Indian movement revival. Mm-hmm. You know, we were getting like proud about ourselves again. You know? <laughs> and um, anyway, so like she had done that work with just one song, you know, and she was like, "You got to go and you got to bring all that out for the people," mm. you know. And I was like, "Okay, okay, whatever." So I sat, I sat down with that archive. And I, it was on the, these reel-to-reel tapes, you know, because mm-hmm. it, 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 they had transferred it from the wax. Because right. the wax is it's, it's amazing technology, and, and, and it's... I don't even know what that means, but it sounds interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a wax player at home. Right? No, 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 very few people do. <laughs> I don't even have a wax player at home, although I do have a couple of cylinders now. Okay. Which is, I have no way to listen to them, but I do have the... Right. So it's a proto, it's like uh, before they had records. You know how records is kind of that like wax, it was vinyl, but it's yeah, like yeah. kind of waxy and it's flat and it etches onto the, onto the vinyl, the mm-hmm. sound waves. And then the, the needle is reading back those sound waves. So same technology with the wax, right? Okay. So it, it etches into the wax, the sound wave, and then when you play it back, you can, you can hear. You know, there's a lot of static and it's mm-hmm. not a clear recording, but right. you can, it's the very first recorded sound right. comes from these mm-hmm. technologies. And um, so it's really incredible to get to, it's such a window into the past. You know, these are Big all time. coming from like over 100 years ago. So, and it's cool because they sing the songs, but they're also, they contextualize the songs too. They tell a story of the songs. And then they're like laughing and dancing and telling jokes and stuff. You can't like, because you can't see any of it. It's just all audio, but you can kind of get a picture of what that was like in your head. Mm. And then and then when they brought out the photos too, right? Because he wasn't just recording sound. He was doing right. like a whole anthropological study on Wulustuik. So he sat there mm. and, you know, was taking photographs and was was making notes, was learning our, he even tried to learn our language, you know? So I was like, mm. for me, as like a, like, it was so interesting to go through this like, European lens of learning our language when I had been doing mm. it another way my whole life and seeing how he was like not quite getting it, you know, and there are certain sounds that just too, like that mouth just don't make sense. Right, know? yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, it was a real special experience in that archive and it really set me on a path to, as soon as I got to witness all the like vast beauty in there, I was like, people got, like mm. our young people got to know about this. Mm. We need to not to be ignorant of the facts and, and, yeah. and the history and understanding right. what, and, where it all comes together. Well, and I think a lot of people view a museum or like an archive as a neutral space, mm. right? And they're not neutral spaces, you mm. know? That's interesting. They create barriers in, in, in accessing and they're, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that they exist, you know, mm. in, one, in one portion, you know, because I got, to make, I got to go and listen to all this history and create a piece of art based on that. And, you know, when you listen to the record, you can hear those ancestors. I included them right in the music. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, thank beautiful you. Thing. But it was very important to me to interject them and be in conversation with them, mm. you know. Um, but it also brings up interesting questions around intellectual property because the museum was like, well, those are technically belong to us. And I was like... Technically, yeah. <laughs> Technically, Technically, they yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, very well. Wow, yeah. And, and, and so it brings up a lot of interesting questions around that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I always have the fundamental belief of like, ask for forgiveness, not for permission. These are our songs. They yeah. may have been shared with a man at one point, yeah. who then gave them to you as a museum, and you hold those cylinders in your right. hands. But we hold the but songs. But what's the content on them? And yeah. we hold the songs in our hearts, right? Yeah. And we remember those songs, mm. right? And so now, because I did that work and, and brought them out, just a couple of them, you know, like I said, there's over 100. Mm. You know, and these are just 11 on that record. Yeah, yeah. So trying all the time to, like, 
every time I get to go home, it's like such a, a visceral sense of, of exchange, mm. of getting to actually go and sing those songs for people again. Um, and then there's been cool moments, uh, especially touring the East of like people coming and be like, I know that one. Like my grandma mm. used to sing that to me. Wow. And it's like, that's a cool thing. Yeah, that right? feels like, whoa, you know, you get to yeah. reconnect people back with their, like, with their relatives, you know, and those songs. And even when I get to play some of those recordings, somebody, one time somebody came out and was like, that's my great great grandfather on that recording that you're playing. What? I get to hear mm -hmm. his voice. You know, that's a gift you gave me. And I was like, yeah. wow, you know. I, I just, there's a lot of those experiences around this work, and I'm just feeling like... You and your mom are doing something together, <laughs> yeah. right? You and your mom, I read about this somewhere, too. Well, she's, a, she's always been... I always speak her name when I, when I talk about this work because she's, like, she's a warrior woman. She's, like, a survivor. Um, mm -hmm. And she's taking a lot of that pain from those, you know, schools and trying to create space for linguistic um, revival or just, you know, what we need. We're in a cool moment right now as indigenous people. We're institution building in a way that we haven't, like, we weren't able to before. Mm -hmm. And right. so, for example, like, herself, you know, going into those school spaces and, and being reprimanded for speaking her language, the only language she knew as a six-year-old child, um, we're trying to totally flip that narrative, mm -hmm. right? And so... Bring the language into the schools. N create our own institutions. Mm -hmm. And so this is a critical thing. You know, there's going to be people to bring our language into those, you know, into those um, kind of provincial school systems and stuff. Right. We're kind of trying to do it a different way. Create um, your own. Yeah, well, because we have the fundamental belief that because the language comes from the land, you have to learn the language in relationship with the land. And so indigenous languages in, in, in our estimation, need to be learned in a different way than, a, since say, French or German or mm. any of those like, kind of European languages. Um, a classroom is, 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 is fine, but if we really want to go deep and really have a deep understanding of place and space and, and how our language is connected to mm. that, we need to be on the land. On and the so land. it's kind of like a, a land-based immersion program. Mm. For, like tactile. Yeah, and, yeah, totally. You said something. Uh, and I think it was in, after you'd won the Juno. Backstage, you said what we need now, and I'm going to paraphrase here and mess okay. it up, but you said something along the lines of, of uh, reconciliation through in a, a beauty. It was, it was the phrase you used. Mm. Like, 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 you know, you we're slamming tables, getting mad, waving flags. That's one thing. And, and I've often thought, well, that's not me. I'm not the type of person that's going to do that. And I remember mentioning this to a friend of mine one day. He's like, how do you, how, he, you know, he, this person that I'm, I'm speaking of, is mm. my friend Alan, I said, how do you always stay so calm and even keel? And it seems like nothing phases you. You don't get shaken. And, and you know, we're not, we're, not, we're not slamming tables and demanding change. And he says, Don, don't forget we stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Those people that went before us, that's, that slammed the tables, Listen, that yeah. kicked open doors so that we could have a space to talk like this. Yeah. And it's like, oh, right, we can't forget that. Because that's it's, it. It, but when you said that, it really resonated with me because I thought, yeah, that's, that's my whole MO. That's kind of like somewhat part of the purpose of this is, mm. you know, not every conversation is going to be indigenous conversations, but I think, you know, I'm an indigenous person, so there, there will always be an indigenous root to it all. That's it. Um, but the thing I keep thinking about is it's, it's the, through beauty and love and care and kindness. I think that's going to, that's what builds the bridges, yeah. right? As, and as opposed to tearing them down. Well, and that's, that's our medicine as, as I, yeah. I, a lot of thoughts on this. Indigenous people, uh, when we look at our philosophies, love is like a really, really fundamental part of what we're here to offer to humanity. Mm. Yeah. You know, every, every people has gifts, you know, mm -hmm. in the human story. And I think one of our gifts is that love runs through a lot of our ceremonies and what we do. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to remember that because sometimes, like, because a lot of us have been so traumatized by colonization, by the experiences of, of those who went before, those who had to do that, because there was mm -hmm. no other way that people would listen, right? Mm -hmm. So now we get to come in and we get to be all, eloquent and easy and beautiful and kind and, and but now this is this is the true expression of who we are as indigenous people because mm -hmm. it's not it's not banging the door down because we've been traumatized right. and shut out the door is off mm -hmm. 
we're walking in and it's because right. people like Buffy. It's because people, people kicked it open. Yeah. You know, that's it, right? You know? yeah, yeah. So I'm always like, I try to be always aware of that. And then also understanding that we are showing something for the other ones too, for the mm. ones coming up. Yes. Um, you know, when I know uh, this is a, another side of the conversation to be had mm. uh, because I feel like it's an important one and we talked about sort of normalizing the conversation. You know, we talk, talk about pronouns. Yeah. And, and this part of the, the, the context of human civilization now more than ever. And I know you prefer the pronouns they, them, or are you kind of, I've also understood that you're okay with he, are you kind of, because I mean, when you walked in, I remember I said, hey, good to see you, brother. And then I thought, oh, so, oh should I have said Can brother? Can we do that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and I, and I want to address it with you, because for me, yeah, I'm always wanting to learn. I always want to learn yeah. as best I can to, to approach people the way that they want to be represented. That's it. You know? um, like, I mean, I think that just speaks to you, you as a human and, and also your teachings, too. Like, humility mm -hmm. is another one of those teachings mm -hmm. that's, like, very important to understand that, like, me as a you know as a cis man, I don't know. I don't know what that mm. gender journey is for for those people. So, mm. so let's bow our head and ask. And so I'm just mm. I, I just want to reflect the appreciation that you even mm. had the, had the chance to ask that. Um, it's funny because I you know, wow. There's so much to this conversation mm -hmm. that I want to hold. Let's in get a, it in three minutes. In let's, a real delicate let's, way. Let's you solve know? the problems for everybody <laughs> in three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so. You know, I grew up. I grew up in a. I'll, I'll take it all the way back. So I grew up in a family of boys. I'm the youngest of three. I was youngest of four brothers. Okay. And um, you know, um, gendered as a boy. You know, mm -hmm. I had really short hair, and you know, I was a, I was a little strange artistic kid, but but definitely a boy. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it wasn't until. Well, I came out very young too as gay because mm. that was the la we just used the language that we have right. at the time that we're using it mm -hmm. until we're offered better language or language that describe things a little more clearly. Yeah. Right. And so, so when I was 12 years old, I knew about gays and lesbians, and so I was a gay, mm -hmm. you know. And I was like, okay, that fits for now. And then it wasn't until. I started to meet people that identified as two-spirit. Mm. That I was like, oh, that's something a little different. Like, mm -hmm. they're like me in a couple ways. You know, there's this, like, mm -hmm. intersection of identity that that's me too. So mm -hmm. this topic is so big that it's like, uh, it, 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 it can sometimes be uh, just a hard Well, And my, my thought process of this is just, again, not that we're going to kind solve of it. Solve, <laughs> solve, solve people's perspective Nothing of how this should be. be. Solved, yeah. But I think for me, it's, just, it's again, it's just part of normalizing. Because I, I feel like people yeah. need to be able to say, uh, w w understanding your pronouns and just saying yeah. like like I want to learn and I want to yeah. and I also want for the people that are watching this totally. to be or are listening to this that that this it's normal to have these conversations right. and it's okay to have these conversations and it's just about respect yeah you know at the end of the day it's like if we can ask if we can try to ask our questions mm -hmm. in a respectful way that person mm -hmm. is going to meet you with respect yeah you know like nine I believe point so. nine times out of ten yeah you know it's new for a lot of people mm. you know I have to have compassion for like you know our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation that just don't, mm. they have no reference point for what, you know, a non-binary person is or like, mm. you know, and these are all really new conversations. Right. And I, so I think it, it helps when we just have humility and ask the questions in a generous way mm. as you have. Yeah. Um, and I think that's often met with generosity and just with like, here's my experience, you know, mm. here's my experience of like, being really gendered as a boy, as a kid, playing sports, doing all that stuff, right. and then being introduced to people that were kind of middle people, kind of in between, and had been raised in that way. Not mm. in shame, not in like, not in you know, Christian dogma of like, right. this is bad and you are wrong, mm. but like raised by their grandmas that knew the old ways, mm. that said, there's always been a place for you. Our communities, mm. we, didn't have the, we didn't have the privilege of excluding anyone. Mm. Everyone was essential, right? And everyone had a gift, and they were bringing something to the community. I feel like we could do this all day. I do too, Honestly, but we should probably Jeremy, stop with that. I, I'm so grateful for you and yeah. for, for spending some time with me and, yeah. uh, and sharing a, a fraction of your story. I feel like there's, there's so much more we can cover, but I, we'll I'm grateful it. for you, and I look forward to doing this again down the road. Hey, we'll do it again for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks, Tom. Jeremy. Yeah.